What's up, y'all? It's Tybri, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Before you take my number, send a cash app. Is he too good for a lab rat? Never hear a broke. All right, y'all. We got Tybri hey. off the porch with us today. I'm super hey. excited to have you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Now, you're in Atlanta. I know you just moved here. So, so far, how, how has your experience been? I love Atlanta. Like, I moved here because I know that it's more opportunities for me. My music, my career, everything that I want to do, like, business-wise, I know that Atlanta was the move. Okay, so earlier, we was talking about your, you just got surgery. Girl, yes, I got surgery. Okay, you got to tell us the experience with that. Okay, um... It wasn't nothing. I've been wanting to get my body done just because I, I got a daughter. Mm -hmm. And after I heard, I was a little, like, I had a little insecurities about my body that I didn't like. And, you know, I was still confident, but it was just little certain things that I just wanted to touch up. So, girl, I found me a doctor. <laughs> and I paid my money, and I went, and I was happy. And oh. I'm going to go again. How was the recovery process? Cause I'm not gonna lie. I think I psyched myself out seeing like y'all in the bodysuits and it'd be like blood everywhere. I mean, it look, it look worse than it really is. Like to me, I was really in pain for like the first couple days. But after that, it was really like mind over matter. Like you can get through it. It, I'll go through it again. <laughs> I ain't going to oh lie. I'll do it again. <laughs> How again. Do you, no, I'm saying I ain't going to do it that many times, but I will go again. I think I'm going to go again. How do you feel about the BBL slander? Because you know they... I don't care. I don't care about no BBL slander. This not y'all body. And I mean, like, I love natural girls. Like, I feel like a lot of us that get our body done, we don't do it for people to like us. We do it because we want to look how we want to look. Like, if you want to fill your hips in, if you want to take your fat out your stomach and put it in your ass, then that's on you. And I just feel like if you're going a cheaper route, then you're going to get cheap results. But if you know you're doing what you got to do, you're paying your money, you're going to look good. Okay, the I'm body is the sitting, thing. like, it's right. The body it's is right. I love it. <laughs> now, we do have to go back into your background because you're originally from East Cleveland. So, you gotta talk to us about what be going down there. Cleveland is, uh, it's, it's a, I don't know. It got its good and it has its bad. I can say the bad might outweigh the good in my city, but I love it for what it is because I feel like if you make it out of Cleveland, you can make it anywhere like in this world. And especially in this country, you can dominate. Like, I don't know, I, I feel like Cleveland breed a lot of like strong people, a lot of successful people. And just like, I don't know, I feel like we cut different in my city, like, cause it's so treacherous, like it's, like where I'm, where I was raised, like the neighborhood where I was from, it was bad. Like don't nobody like going to East Cleveland, driving to East Cleveland. It's terrible, it's terrible. But I mean, we made a way. So Cleveland, it's cool. How would you bad. describe your upbringing there? I would say I had the best of both worlds. That's how I feel. I feel like. Um, Growing up, I had a good, I had a good childhood, and then as I got older, I really start to realize like my environment, everything, and I just, I just wanted to just make it out of that and just be better. So, you know, my upbringing was, it was good, like it was cool, and it wasn't, it wasn't too bad, but I would definitely been through a lot of shit, so. Everything that I went through made me who I am today. What would you say are the chances of somebody actually making it out of East Cleveland? 
I feel like the chances are very slim. Like the chances of making it out of my city is like, you will be hanging on by a thread. And, and you, you just gotta, honestly, I'ma say, it's really on you, it's your work, it's your work ethic. Like, if you put your mind to something and you stay consistent, you can really make it out. So I'm not even gonna say it's slim. It's, it is slim, but it's on you. It's if you determine, like you gotta be determined, you can make it out that bitch for sure. Like, you can definitely be prosperous. We got a lot of successful people that then came out of Cleveland alone and really whatever field they are in, they are dominating that field. So, like, it's on you. And it's gonna take time. You gotta just keep going. Now you know we gotta ask, <laughs> what age were you when you officially jumped off the porch? I probably jumped off the porch around like 13, 14. Oh, you. <laughs> and what's jumped off the porch? Like, I feel like going outside like, being bad though. Like mm -hmm. I was, we were, when I, where I grew up at, we were, we were bad ass kids. Like we used to do what we wanted to do. Like we did not, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. Kids now, they don't go outside. We used to be outside. We used to be outside fighting throwing stuff at people's cars. Like, <laughs> we used to be reckless, low key. Like, what's, I was what's like a crazy moment that you can remember, like, with your wait, time? Wait, hold on, wait. What is jumped off the porch mean, though? Because <laughs> for Basically, me, where I'm from, when they be like, like, you ain't jump off the porch till now, like, as an adult. And that's like, oh, but you ain't really been, you ain't, you went outside, you went stepping. Basically, like, <laughs> when we say jumped off the porch, it's like when you officially started to discover everything on your own. Oh, when I officially started to discover everything on my own when I had my daughter. Mm hmm Like, I thought you was finna say sex. You no. was like, <laughs> you was like, <laughs> no. You was over there looking like, I'm like, hold on, I don't even think I was like that. But no. Nah. Um, yeah, definitely when I had my daughter, though. When I had my daughter, that's when I knew, like, I had to grow up and be a woman. I was 19 when I had my daughter. I knew that I had to get on my shit. I knew I had to take care of me, and I had a little me, and I'm already, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. I knew I can't let myself down, especially not a product of me. So that's when I really had to, like, start grinding. Like, I, that's when I really probably went through the moment where I was like, damn, shit is real. Like, shit is real out here. Like, what you gonna do, you know? What were some lessons that you even learned with that in your time of being off the porch? Um, it just made me know that you can get through things. Like, um, I don't know about everybody, but I know a lot of mothers, when we have our children, like we go through this phase after you have your kid and I feel like it's, it's deeper than what they be saying, like postpartum, like like that shit will take a toll on I you. Had like that, that, yeah. yeah, like that shit will really take a toll on you. So when I got through the phase of like doubting myself and like, damn, I done had a kid, I'm 19. When I'm, once I got over that and I was just owning it, like, yeah, like, you know, I'm gonna make sure we good. That's when I really, like, I don't know, I feel like I became a different person, like a different type of, of beast. Like, I don't give a fuck, I'm gonna do what I gotta do. And being a mother in the creative field, like, you gotta deal with all the slander. Like, it's not the typical job as like a mother, you know what I mean? Yeah. And another thing um, I would say is like really finding yourself outside of just being a mother. I feel like it's really not nobody's business if you know you right. know. Like, if you in this field, then in my world, this is my world. I'm an artist, you know? This is my world. Other, other artists, other mothers, they understand like certain sacrifices you have to make as a mother when you're trying to make a way for these kids. Like, this is our job. This is what we have to do. So 
If you have to spend time away from your kid for a minute, just know that, you know, you, you just setting y'all up for the future so that your kid can be straight. I can see if it's, it's bitches out here that's not taking care of their kids. They really just out kicking it, not doing shit and not trying to make sure that their kids is good. You know, it's a difference. Like when you really handling your business and you trying to build an empire or whatever you trying to do, but you know, you doing something good and you know that your kid gonna reap good benefits from it. I feel like fuck what people say. Like that ain't that ain't that ain't their place. Who cares? I mean. Now, what was life like for you right before you jumped into rap full time? Girl, I, <laughs> I really I wanted to be like a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. I wanted to I wanted to do um what is it called? Real estate. I wanted to, I always wanted to be on my bossy shit. I was doing hair. Like I always found me a way to get me a coin. Like I used to be doing hair in high school. I used to be doing eyebrows in the bathroom. I'm charging bitches five, ten dollars. You want your brows done, I do your <laughs> brows. Like I was a finesse. I used to be leaving from school, going to work. I, I got out of school at like high school. I got out of school at like 2.30. I used to get on the bus, it was the 28, it's called the RTA, that's the R bus called. I used to get on the 28, on the RTA bus, go down Euclid, get off like three lights down from my school, and I used to go work at the hair store called Danny's, and they was like paying, they was, I, I, I really feel bad for them people that still work there, they was paying us like, shit, six dollars an hour. I was getting paid like a weekly thing, like 250 a week soon. Little, little shit, but to me that was some money. Like you know, that was like you know I can I can finesse. And then on the weekends I'd be working there and doing hair. Girl, I was giving me some money. <laughs> um, and I did watch one of your interviews and I saw that you also was working at a call center before you jumped in the rap too. too. Oh my God, what was your experience like with that? Um, I hated that job. I had got fired from there, and then they ended up letting me come back. And then after they let me come back, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> really? I quit. I quit. They had, I had had, I had caught a case and it was just a lot going on. And at the call center, you know, you can't have certain shit going on, but I had ended up beating the case. I got a lawyer, all type of shit. And after that, they had like, let me come back. And I hated it. I'm like, man, I can't work for nobody like this. Like, I don't, this is not for me. And then I just started taking my music 100,000% serious. And like really just, I told myself like, I'm not gonna confuse the universe. If I'm gonna really rap, if I'm gonna really do music, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna take some time to make music. I'm not gonna make that, I'm not gonna put that on the back burner. I'm gonna do that every day. You know, I'm gonna make that my job. Like, this is what I'm gonna do. Did you have any fear stepping out on faith and like pursuing your rap career full time? I did. Because I, because I have a daughter. And it's like, at first, I'm gonna tell you, when I started rapping like four or five years ago, when I started rapping, it wasn't that popular to be a female rapper. It wasn't that popular. It wasn't like right now, everybody wanna rap. Every girl that got their ass done, got their titties done, teeth, or whatever, I ain't saying nothing of that because I love all my bad bitches. I ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying everybody wants this type of lifestyle, this celebrity type of thing. Everybody want to make music now because they feel like they going to be the next whatever. But when I started rapping, it wasn't as popular. So hell yeah, I had a little, uh, I, I had that I was still working and doing certain shit. So I definitely was like, I don't know. I felt kind of, it was like to my friends and to family members, they felt like, what is you doing? Like, you got a kid, you just had a baby, you trying to be a rapper? Like, come on now. Like, especially like, my mama supported me, but like my aunts and stuff, they like, come on baby, like what you, you, you gotta make sure. And I'm like, y'all, I'm, this what I'm doing. And it started working out and then the tables turned. And when the tables turned, they like, it paid off or you know what I'm saying? I'm proud of you. Da, da. Did you I ever did doubt that. yourself in the process? Yeah, yeah. 
I feel like I, we human. I, I know every artist doubt themselves sometimes. But I don't know, like, you know, you got to take the risk to get the reward. And how were you really, how were you really able to tune out the negative um, thoughts with your family and things like that to go all in and just be like, man, F this, I'm finna rap. Like, that's what I'm finna do. I just kept going though, like, I made them make me, I made them take me serious. Like, like, I did not, I did not basically like, I ain't gonna say limit myself, but I did not let them discourage me. Like I didn't, I, I made them hold me to a certain standard cause they, they, they thought that it was a game. Right. Like they thinking it's a joke. Everybody thinking it's a joke. Everyone, like when I was first posting, it was hella people like, oh yeah, you should rap, you should rap. When I first did like, was doing freestyles, I was like, oh, you should rap. But then when I was really like just doing that, you know bitches was talking shit like <laughs> laughing, like look at her rapping, yeah. she rapper, she a rapper now, like, huh, you know. Right. And then when bitches start getting on the radio and bitches start making money and bitches start, you know, really popping shit and they start seeing me with other people, then that's when they like, oh, I fuck with her. Oh, yeah, I'm proud of you. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> Now, in 2016 is when you started getting fully into music. So talk to us about that transition from working at a call center to now you hitting the studio. I feel like it's still work. Like, I feel like this, this, this is my job, but I love my job. Like, I love what I do. It don't feel like I, I'm, I'm just working. Like, I know that I'm working, but it's like, it don't feel like, huh. I gotta go, like, it's therapy for me. Now, talk to us about your very first time you recorded in the studio, cause I know it's a bit different. <laughs> My very first time recording in the studio, I did not know what I was doing. I wrote it on the paper for a long time. Like sometimes now when I really want to get in my bag, I have to write it down on the paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was reading it off the paper like da, 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 and I didn't make no hook. I didn't know how to structure a song or nothing. I just went in that bitch and it was a banger. And what was your reaction when you saw yourself really killing shit in the booth? I didn't know. I didn't understand. Like I, I, I understood. I didn't. I didn't like. I didn't know that I was gonna be like that. Like I didn't know that it was gonna be like that. Like baby girl, I didn't know. You know, I didn't know that it was gonna. It was gonna pop. I'm thinking like I was just gonna put some music out and they was gonna be like, okay. No, they was like, what's up? Like, what's next? Like, what else? Can you drop? Can you go to the, can you make some more songs? And then other people started wanting to get in the studio with me. And then that's when I knew like, oh, bitch, you're not a rap. Whatever. <laughs> now, what was everybody's reaction? Like your close one's reaction when they heard you in the booth and your music? My mama was going crazy. First of all, my mama would play my songs every time people came over, like, listen to her. Listen. <laughs> if you know my mama, you know my mother is really crazy. She's really funny. She was, Playing it for everybody, playing it for all my family members. I'm cussing. She like, y'all just gonna have to hear this. Like, I know y'all don't like this, but y'all gonna have to hear this. Some of my family members, like the older ones, they was just like, but now, girl, I be having them cussing. What? They be cussing. <laughs> Not having them cussing. <laughs> now they be cussing. No, listen. All my shit. Do you remember the first song that you recorded in the booth? Yeah, it was. Um, I did a song with this girl named Britt Bands from my city. I did a song with her and we had went to like somebody house and recorded some shit. And when I did the song with her, I'm like, all right, I ain't about to be going to people's house and shit. So I'm like, I want to go to the real studio. So I went to the real studio then. When I went to the real studio, I was paying like $20 an hour. I started doing that on my own. I'm like, all right, bet. I'm about to go get two hours because shit, $40, $60. I'm about to go get two, three hours. I'm going to go record. 
And then, you know, I'm gonna go kick it with my friends. And that's what I started doing some days. I'd be like, y'all, we're going to the studio today and my friends will come with me. And I just, you know, go be, I was a rapper. I, 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 started, <laughs> I started being a rapper. I had to do my rapper shit. So, yeah, the first time I went to the studio, it was, it was funny. Do you remember your, your first like rap that you ever wrote? Yep. Can you, you remember the lyrics? I feel like, I think I was like, time after time I had, I tried to try, and I for girl, I forget, <laughs> girl. It was some old lovey-dovey shit. So I don't even want to rap that. And this was all in 2016, right? Yep, 2016 when I did that Monica So Gone Challenge, that was my first real rap. Remember that challenge? Yep. Yeah, that Monica So Gone Challenge. I did that challenge and I fucking killed it. And everybody was like, that's when everybody was telling me, like, you should go to the studio. Mm -hmm. And I went to the studio. And when I went to the studio, I started liking it. And then I kept going to the studio. So then it was like, like I said, it became therapy for me. Like I had, now I got to get it out. Like now this the way that I cope with shit. Like I have to put it in a song, how I'm feeling. Or I'm a, it's going to. It's going to fuck with me. It's going to eat me right. up, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't know, girl. You ain't no rapper. No, but I feel it, though. <laughs> you know like, what I'm I, I understand what y'all got to go through. Like, I be hearing the stories all the time. And it's a lot. Like, being a, especially, and I'm going to emphasize this, being a black woman yeah. in the industry, like, it's a lot. You got to fight through a lot. You definitely got to fight through a lot. You got to just, you got to be headstrong. I just posted that today. Like, I for saw me, that. For me to be, like, 23 uh, uh, a black woman into like it's a lot of us doing this shit right now though like the black youth like I feel like my age range the ones like us in our 20s I don't know I feel like we a little bit different like we we going and getting it like we not playing no games like we we headstrong like you gotta just be straightforward I feel like for me to be my age I'm definitely a, a strong individual and like just I be try, I just I, I just be trying to learn and like I, I'm a sponge and I like to get like good game and not even good game but I like to get like I just I, I be want to be schooled on certain things from successful people like genuine people like I just want to learn how to how to I don't know you know what I'm saying like just be a, a, a boss and also a, a true to who I am you know what I'm saying like. What were some challenges that you had to face whenever you started pursuing your career? I had challenges with my attitude. I still be having to deal with my attitude because I got like this personality thing where I switch and I will flip the fuck out or like I will like turn into another per not even turn into another person, but I will really like snap and I had to like start controlling that because I don't know I just can't be like that no more so I had a problem with like just <clears throat> trying just just trying to not let a lot of stuff get to me because when you get put in the light you're gonna get tested so I had to stop letting people make me snap letting people get to me like that like I had to had to put on this kind of this like build this wall up to where that shit don't bother me. Like my personal life is my personal life. And then me being Ty Bree is a different thing. You can't get to me. Them comments and shit, like all of the, 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 the negativity that come with being a public person, like that was a challenge that I had to get through because at first it was a lot for me. I used to be in the comments arguing with people, <laughs> like, bitch, who you talking to? Yeah. Like, well, you don't know what you're talking about. But like, I don't gotta get nobody that energy no more. Like, you gotta just elevate, gotta rise up. Was it more so like a realization, like you just got tired of having fucking attitudes? Um, girl, I don't get tired of having no attitude, girl. I ain't got attitude <laughs> right now. I don't. It's never. <laughs> <laughs> you are so crazy. <laughs> no, no, but for real, it's not. It, it, you know, when you're growing, you growing when you get tired of your own shit. So it's yes. like, bitch, you better watch. Stop talking so much. Like, watch your mouth. Like, you know, or just like, 
you got, I had to tighten up. Like as I got older, I just had to like really polish it up. That's what I had to do. Just polish it up. Stop being so, you know, uh, you not in the hood. You ain't, you know, I had to grow. I had to clean up my act. I'm still working on it. It's a, it's an everyday thing. Now, just to go back, um, when did you finally start seeing the buzz for yourself? I started seeing the buzz for myself when I dropped um, Candy Lady. When I dropped Candy Lady, and then I dropped Bobbin. That's was like that's that's when I knew that I had something there. Like I knew that I had to really step on shit. Right. That wasn't even in there. We weren't even saying step on shit. But I knew that I had to dominate. Like, okay. Right. Bitch, you got something. You need to keep going. And I'm like, I'm different. I felt like I was different. At that point, I feel like no female in my city from Cleveland ever popped like this. Like, ain't y'all, like... Y'all not even fuck with me. That's how I felt. <laughs> you know what, Bree? Like, I just don't think you understand how lit you are. And I'm going to tell you, like, you are so lit. We know who you are. Like, you are that I bitch. Be, I, I be forgetting sometimes. I be thinking, like, oh, this person probably more popping than me. Or, and they be like, they'll probably walk up to me and be like, oh, I fuck with your music. And I'll be like, oh, for real? Like, I don't be, sometimes I'll be like, I don't be... I, I ain't gonna say I be doubting myself, but sometimes I don't be knowing like the statures of who the fuck I am. I be having to remind myself like, you got it. Like you got it. But thank you though. You are that girl. I'm, thank I'm you. telling you, we the, I ain't saying that for no reason. Like at <laughs> no, all. No, you definitely tell me that you was listening to my music and you like my music and I asked you, I'm like, did you really, or was it yes. just for the, you no, know, it's for real. You show me your playlist, you show me your playlist, okay. Now, how were you really able to identify yourself as an artist? I'm still identifying myself right now. Like, I'm, I'm at this point where I'm trying to transition from so much of the local underground shit. Like, I, 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 I deserve more, I want more, so. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to really even answer that question. Like, like I said, I'm still in a process of, of figuring out, you know, artist wise. Like, I feel like you can't just put yourself in a certain box. Like, I feel like it, we change. You know how like a chameleon, not even a chameleon. What is something that like changes and gets better like over time? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like a flower. Like, yeah, like a flower or a something. Butterfly. A butterfly. Like, you know, the first part when you in the in the shell and then you become a caterpillar or whatever, mm -hmm. however the fuck it go. When you first you a <laughs> caterpillar, then you would think thing, thing, little shell, then you become <laughs> a butterfly. I feel like you go through that phase. You gotta go through them phases. So right now, this is pretty great. So with you being in the industry, what are some pressures that you felt as a female artist? I felt pressures with trying to be like, at first I was a little more tennis shoes and I want to wear tennis shoes, t-shirt, cute hoodies, like, you know, fly shit. But I wanted to be more like laid back. Like I didn't, I, I had to start getting dressed like I had to start putting shit on I had to start getting cute and being more like you know tapping into like the shit that I that I you like you know how you don't got the budget for some shit like mm -hmm. I want to wear some shit like that but but you can't really afford it so I had to I had to like transition from wearing just regular shit I had to start getting into my more girly side because my first couple videos girl I wanted to wear like <laughs> little things around my head bandanas and um I wanted to put on hats and tennis shoes you know I wanted that to be my thing like they was asking me like what you want to be your what you want to be your look like what you I'm like yo I just want to wear tennis shoes every time I pop up I got on the flyest tennis shoes and they like no Ty <laughs> they like they like, no, girl, you about to put on some heels. You about to get cute. Right. Like, no. So now it's like, I be want to get cute. <laughs> <laughs> I really do want to ask you, 
Do you feel like it's easy to lose yourself and Girl, lose what you heard on this bench? <laughs> 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 Do you feel like it's really easy to lose yourself and lose what you stand for being in this industry? For some people, but not for me. I ain't going to say that because I didn't see it happen to the best. I think it can happen. I ain't going to say it's super easy. I think it takes time. Like once you in it for so long, then it's like certain shit become normal to you. So then you then you you just change, you know? You can just change. You not a, you not if you've been an artist for 10, 20 years, you're not going to be the same person you was when you first started for one, you growing up, right? And for two, you not a scram you not scrambling to be famous or whatever anymore. You you are that some celebrities or whatever live like this. So you get you get accustomed to certain shit. So I feel like it's if you gonna stay true to yourself, it gotta be in you, not on you. So like you can't let the money change you. You can't let all this. You can't let all the glitz and glamour stop you from fucking with your family or you know like being true to your real friends or you know what I'm saying or letting you burn bridges with people that help you get to where you're at. I feel like that's when it's a problem. Like mm -hmm. you gotta make sure that you keep the people around you that really want the best for you because once you once them people gone you out there by yourself you're gonna be swimming in the water with them sharks and that shit get deep i feel like because i didn't seen it and just getting back into your music career what would you say was like one of the biggest risks you've had to take with it me right now moving to atlanta that's a big risk, cause Girl, yeah. Ohio, Atlanta. That's, that's a big risk, like, but I had to do it. It's a lot of my friends that be like, I wanna move to Atlanta, I wanna move to Atlanta. It's only a select few of us that really got up and left. And it might seem like everybody moved to Atlanta, but I feel like it take, like, it take some courage. It take for you to, to really put your big girl panties on, or thong, you know, I know thongs, but. <laughs> It take for you to put, you know, it take for you to just really get up and do it and see what it's like. And if you can't take it, you can't take the pressure, then you can't take the pressure. But you got to just go for certain things. So I definitely feel like that's one of my biggest risks that I've taken so far is just getting up and moving out of my city and coming here to expand because I know that me being here is, is, is just going to maximize who I am and it's just more opportunities at my fingertips that I can really take a hold to and really just, you know, take it wherever I want to go with it. So I did watch an interview of yours and you stated how when you was coming coming up in your rap career and you was like taking off, mm -hmm. a lot of people hated you that were rapping before your time. So why did you feel that way? I feel like it was more so like, a, um, like people try to deflect they, 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 the things that's going wrong in their life on you and be mad at you for accomplishing the things that they didn't get to accomplish or that they failed at, you know? So for me, I don't give a fuck about none of them hoes that rap before me that was mad. I don't care about, you know, I never tried to beef with them. They always wanted to come and try to fuck with me or try to get some love you know, try to ruffle my feathers and I and I pop, you know, I be nipping shit in the bud. Like, I'm not with that rap shit. Like, I'm a rapper, but I really put my boots on and we can really do what you want to do. But it don't really be that for real. It be that bitches be mad that they music didn't go nowhere or that they didn't get the opportunities that I was handed or, you know what I'm saying? Or time, it just wasn't right. You know, I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> So you are the very first female out of Cleveland to be signed and to make it out. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I feel like I still got a long way to go. I feel like I still have some more to show them. I feel like I still haven't made it to where I want to make it for them. Like I really want to do it for my city. I really want to do it for my family. Like I really want to show them that I can go next level and that we can really do it. And it's because it's going to be more to come after me. I'm just the first to do it. It's more that's gonna come. It's more that's coming right now. You know, so I just wanna show them that we could take it further. Like, I'm gonna take this shit to the, the, as, far, as far as I can to the furthest extent. 
you know? Like, I'm not just going to rap. I'm going to do other things. Like, I'm going to really, really, like, I'm going to dominate. I'm going a, I'm to a be one of the greatest to come out of my city. So I ain't, I ain't, I ain't done. <laughs> I ain't done. Now, um, in regards to being the only female artist, why do you think that it is kind of hard for other female artists to make it out of, the, out of Cleveland? Because everybody want to pull each other down. Everybody want to be, I ain't going to say pull each other down. Because honestly, them bitches be clicking up and they be, oh, they be trying to, they be coming for me. <laughs> but I don't know. It's just like, honestly, I take my shit a little, a little bit more serious than others. And the approach that I take with my music is not how they, how they approach. Like, I, when I put things out, I want things to be done right. Like, when I drop, I'm not just dropping anything. Like, when, I, when I'm coming out and I'm being seen, I'm going to make sure that, you know, it's of substance. Like, it's going to have, it, it's going to mean something. So, for them... And it's not all of them, because it's definitely some, it's some bitches in Cleveland that rap that I fuck with. And just because you ain't sign no deals or you ain't, you know, rich or whatever, that don't take away from your artistry, that don't take away from your talent, because a lot of people don't want it as bad as I want it or how another artist that really want to, you know, make it want it. They just want to make music, you know? So I just feel like people should just, you should just, they should take their music more serious and really like try to hold themselves to a different standard and once you hold yourself to a higher standard then more doors is going to open for you because don't nobody want to deal don't nobody nobody not tapping into like janky shit like you can't you 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 gotta be on some you gotta be fierce like you gotta carry yourself like in your music, when you out in the city, you gotta just carry yourself like you that bitch and own it and really own it. Like, everybody, they be wanting to, see, that's why I said I really, I basically manifested my my career because I, like I said, I wasn't going to, and, I, and I'm st I still am, but I, I wasn't going to confuse the universe. Like, I am not about to go work, no regular job, full time, and then put rap on the back burner. No, I'ma put my all into rap, and I'll right. probably do some little shit on the side just to make sure I'm cool, but I'ma put my all into this. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna make this my second duty, no. And I feel like once they do that, they, they gonna take off. They gonna start taking off. You know what, I read something very interesting that I loved about you and how you're still active within your community and you give back. And I read yeah. that you even have performers from, I couldn't remember what high school it was, but you from like- Shaw. Yeah, and you would bring them to like perform with you as them dancers. my only dancers. Them the only girls that dance for me. I used to be in a, um, in a band and them dan the dancers, like we all was in this together. And I know them my whole childhood. And they can dance. Like, they are real dancers. Like, this is their life. Like, they went to school. They went to college to dance. And I feel like I, I love the fact that I'm able to give them the opportunity to really, like, mm -hmm. dance in front of people, in front of crowds, in front of an audience that came to see us. Like, I don't know. I love that. I love that. Now, getting into... Shout this. out to my girls, BB, Daya, Mayana. <laughs> y'all know I love y'all. And getting into this bad bitch music, I do want to say with you specifically, um, when I was reading up on you, you were actually on tour with Flo, Millie, and Mulatto, and the yes. pandemic cut it short. Yes. So talk to us mm -hmm. about your tour experience with them first. So on tour, we had fun. We didn't get the tour as long as I wanted to, and I know as long as they wanted to. Um, but we definitely got to have, you know, lunch and dinner and stuff and connect and get to know each other. We did like top golf a couple days. And, you know, I just knew, like, I just got to 
to get a feel of of different upcoming artists that's really right. trying to do the same thing as me and we fed off each other energy and they both was cool and just humble like like we all we all clicked I especially can, me and Lotto we clicked for I, real I can see that chemistry they both cool <laughs> yeah they both cool me and Lotto we definitely clicked more though like I um end up doing a, a record with her and that went crazy it's called wake up we shot the video in Miami in the middle of the pandemic. And I fuck with Lotto. Shout out to Lotto. I fuck with her. That's my <laughs> girl. Do you got any crazy tour stories? I just feel like you got it was, Like I said, we didn't get to tour that long. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't get to tour as long as we, like, we were supposed to tour. So we didn't get the full tour experience. Like, right. So I don't have that many crazy little memories from there. I wish I did, but when we go back on tour, we, the fuck up. Ooh, but I know you got some crazy tour stories from like other times that you took. I mean, I got story. It's it's it just be crazy stuff going on. Period. Out here, like I didn't have I didn't have people get the fight in when I when I play um Candy Lady. Throw some cash on me. Niggas want to both throw money on me, and now they bumping each other, and now they mad because one stepping on the other. Now it's a whole love. Now I got to stop the music. Hey, what's up? Like, I know it's fire or whatever, but baby, relax. We not about to get my shit shut down. <laughs> now, we got to talk about that single bobbing because yeah. that went crazy. So talk about the recording process with that one. Well, Bob and you ain't probably gonna believe it, but I recorded that song real quick. I didn't want to really even do the song. It was Ray Jordan. He kept calling me. He was like, come to the studio. I'm like, all right. I think I was running a little late. And I came to the studio. He like, bro, you should get on this beat. I'm like, man, play the beat. He already was talking to me about the beat before. He was talking to me about the beat. I'm like, he like, man, you should get on this one beat. This be hard, this shit hard. He like, I already know you're gonna be fire on this. I'm telling you, you gonna be fire on this. And it wasn't that I didn't want to get on it. It just was like, I was just like, all right, I'm a, all right, all right. So then he just kept telling me like, all right, come to the studio, bro. So I come to the studio. When I get to the studio, he playing the beat. He like, you about to, you, you about to get on this. I'm like, I, I'm like, all right. So I started writing to it. And when I started writing to it, it was just like, I couldn't stop. So then I'm just saying my little shit. <laughs> so they like, they like, Todd, what you got? So I'm just saying what I got. I'm like, nah. they like, oh shit. He like, oh no, hell no, finish that, finish that. So I'm right. like, yeah, I finish it, finish it. Once I finish it, everybody in the studio is now in my session though. Everybody that was in the studio was all in my session. They all in there like, this shit hard, this shit hard. So I'm like, all right. So he like, you know what? I'm like, we about to put a video on Instagram then, fuck it. So I got in the little chair, you know, the, <laughs> you know your little, this, the, this, the, this was the thing at the time when you was like an upcoming rapper, you did your preview of your song. People still do this though. You do your preview of your song in the little chair while you still at the studio. So I had did that. And when I did that, everybody, after the song was done, everybody was like, oh, everybody that was at the studio was like, oh, Hard. Everybody was just screaming and stuff, and that was on the actual clip that I had posted on Instagram. When I posted it on Instagram, but when I posted it on Instagram, everybody was going crazy. Dumb. Like drop that. And the first time that I went out and performed that song, everybody in the when I say everybody in the whole building knew the words cameras up, flashlights out, everybody, they went crazy. That's why I'm like, damn, this shit is crazy. Nah, that's, that song right there, everybody was like, this this shit, who, is, who is who is Ty Bree? Like, what's up with her? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Now, your project Sweet Lick, which I love, the, you know what I'm already gonna say. My favorite song that I feel like everybody still <laughs> sleeps on is Hallucination. It's like my real fans, they, they like, okay, I got, I be having like new fans that, um, like they come in and they hear my like two popular songs, Bob and Wake Up or whatever, but it's like my real friend, my real fans, they know the shit that I fuck with. Like I fuck with Hallucinate 
it was like to the point where it probably didn't make my, it wasn't going to make my project, but I fuck with it so hard. I'm like, we putting that, I don't care what y'all is talking about. We putting Hallucinate on there and we put Hallucinate on there. And surprisingly, it's like the runner up. It's like the runner up because maybe I knew. Like that's, I knew. that's my song. Yeah. Besides Wake Up With Mulatto, of course. But yeah, that's Hallucination. my shit too. But I fuck with Hallucinate. That's just, it's just me and YFL Pooh on there. Pooh, he from Cleveland too. He wasn't even supposed to be on my song. I was at the studio recording it and he had came to my session. And when I was recording it, I was like trying to finish. I was like trying to write my verse or finish writing something. He like, man, let me hop on it. So as I'm writing what I got, <laughs> he in there. I'm not even knowing that he's in the booth really recording for real. Right. I'm thinking like he in there just playing around. So he in there recording. When he come out, they play it. And I'm like, oh, this shit hard. I'm going to just keep him on there. I kept him on there. Now, you recently dropped Hit It with Soulja Boy. Yeah, I just dropped the record. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you like... Yeah, I just dropped a song, hit it with Soulja Boy, me, Soulja Boy, Aki. Aki, he from my city as well. Um, it's a fun, it's a bop. It's a bop. It's gonna shake that ass I'm first, music. I'm the first bitch in my city to have a song with Soulja Boy. It's definitely shake that ass music. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I'm, okay, look, I'm gonna put my phone down. Like, Why we gonna get into them? what's next and what's coming up, because we need some new stuff, girl. I don't know. I'm I'm about to drop some more music right now. Um, I just been working on singles. Um, I'm trying to build up to a project, but right now I just been working on singles. I just been recording, recording, recording. I got another record finna drop with Erica Banks. Oh, uh, that shit's gonna yeah, be hard. I got another record finna drop with Erica Banks, and um, I'm also about to drop a single for one. So y'all about to get a lot of singles out of me right now. I'm, I'm giving y'all singles. I'm letting y'all just, you know, I'm just handing y'all these bitches right now. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> and then y'all could be on the lookout for a project 2022. I'm gonna give y'all another project, a better project than Sweet Lick. Sweet Lick had a lot of my previous music on there, plus a couple new tracks. But this project is gonna be all new shit. Like all music that y'all haven't heard, and y'all can get really like get to know me as an artist and just like figure out my artistry, like you know, hear who Tybri is because I be spacing out my music a lot. And where do you see yourself in about I would say like two years as an artist? I I would definitely see myself doing the things that I I've been dreading, not even dreading that I've been dying to do. Like XXL, BT, MTV, right. all of that. Like I'm ready to do all that. Like I'm ready to hit these red carpets, front row at the awards, like all of that. Like that's what I'm on. And I know that you have been doing this for a long time, but like inside, do you ever get a feeling like, damn, I'm still kind of slept on? Yeah, like I feel like I probably ain't gonna get that feeling until I make a hundred million that right. I'm still slept on because everybody, ain't, you know, like they sleeping on me. I gotta make a hundred million before I be like, all right, they ain't sleep. As of right now, I definitely know that, you know, some people be sleeping on me, but I'm, I'm here to stay. I'm gonna go ahead and give you your flowers because I love the hell out of you. And girl, you. like this is the beginning. Like this is only this the beginning for you. This is definitely the beginning. And I just thank y'all for having me. I fuck with that hard. Should my booty hurt? But. <laughs> and really quick, oh, I don't want to hold you too long. But do you have any advice for any upcoming artists who feel like they can't make it outside of their city? You can. Like you're going to. If you put your mind to it, I ain't even going to say that corny old school, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. Like, really, really do what you have to do. Like, really take your craft serious. Whatever you're doing, take it serious. Really own who you are and really become who you want to be. Don't doubt yourself. And even if you do doubt yourself, don't keep doubting yourself. Keep going. Keep going, grind it out, thug it out, whatever you gonna go. You ain't gonna have all the money when you first start. You ain't gonna have, you might get it and lose it. You ain't no real hustler. You ain't no real boss until you lose it and make it again. So I'm saying that to say, you can do it. Just do it, do it, do it, don't stop. 
don't fucking stop. Just don't <laughs> stop. Because it's plenty of times where you might take a break. Just don't stop. There's plenty of times where I wanted to stop, but I'm not. Period. And before we wrap up, any last words or shout outs? Um, I just want to say shout out to myself right now. I'm at this point in my life where I'm just trying to be wrapped up in me. Like, I'm just like, I'm 23 and I'm, uh, I'm just evolving. I, yeah, I'm evolving. Shout out to me. Shout out to Ty Bree. Shout out to my future and all the blessings that's coming my way. I know that's right. So yeah, be on the lookout for my new music for one on the way. Check out Hit It with Soulja Boy. Um, I have another record coming soon with Erica Banks. And um, follow me on Instagram at Real Ty Bree. And I'm out. Before you take my number, send a cash app. Pussy too good for a lab rat. Never hear a broke nigga say smash that.